Hi, friends, and welcome back to the sesh. I am Kendall Ray. And I am Janelle. Welcome to episode 69, people. Oh, Woo! yeah. That's We've a lot of made episodes. it. Yeah, it is a lot. I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah, we made Hours. it to 69. Now we can just stop. Yeah, that's it. Uh, this is our last episode of the sesh <laughs> after we just fucking spent months trying to redo our set. Yeah, it was just for a few weeks, which, by the way, can we just say we are working on making the yeah, space we see even your better. Feedback. We definitely see a feedback. Uh, we, and agree. We, understand, we agree. Yeah. We agree. <laughs> we yeah, it's, agree. It's like everything's beautiful, but the background's a little jaily. Yeah, right? we feel like we're in a little bit of like a Walmart. <laughs> yeah. The light's a little like fluorescent. It's a little, a little Walmart cold. meets jail. Walmart but with cute furniture. Yeah, great furniture, cute hosts, and a cute dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Charlie makes it a lot better. But we are working on getting a different background yeah. that's just a little warmer. And working on our lighting has been a big struggle, to be honest. I mean, uh, lighting is fucking really hard it to is, do. You guys, I've never figured it out. I've been doing camera it is stuff. The for hardest part like 10 by years. far, I feel like, to get figured out is the lighting. It is. And we're in an office space now. So we're, you know. The overhead light is like we can only do so much. Very jail. Yeah, we have no jail. Over, we have no overhead. We're just being lit up with like soft boxes and yeah. ring lights and anything we can find. Yeah, really. There's like several different types. There's four different types yeah. of lights. We're looking Which at right side now. note? I know that my glasses reflect it, and um, no one's actually left a negative comment. Is a lot of like been annoyed by it, as far as I could see, but. I'm like, I want to still wear my glasses. So as long as you guys are cool with it, because I don't know, I'll, I can wear my contacts, but They're my glasses not are cute. Cool with it. And I got new glasses for the first time in 10 oh, years. Yeah, I'm like really did. into them. They look really good on you. Thank you. I like them. Warby Parker, shout out. Mm, oh, yeah. Not even sponsored. Oh, yeah, we're not. As of now, at least. Mile higher is, though. Yeah. I think we've worked with them at, in the sash before. But, anyways, I do recommend their brand. Side note. Uh, but, yeah, but yeah, we are working on the background, but today we are doing some fun. Sex topics. <laughs> We're having sex it's all about on the sex, table, baby. It's Isn't all that about you and me. Yep. It's all yep. about what is it in the bad. Charlie's got a lot of advice. I mean, he's he's full. This of it. guy has had sex more with more partners <laughs> than all of us combined. It's true. He's grandfathered many a child. Yes, he has. Oh, poor poor boy. Char. He was in breeding for six years. Yes, he was. He says, I was just used for my weenie. But yeah. after he made really cute babies. <laughs> yeah, he definitely did. Look how adorable he is. Char. Speaking of Char, Char's been using a new product of yours. Oh, yes. Very exciting. Sydney, come on down. Come on. We need like fucking music. Sydney from Higher Love Wellness down. is here to talk about our newest launch at I'm Moving Your Little Muffins. Janelle's got some <laughs> <laughs> little bites. They're good, dude. They're like fun, fatty little bites. Oh, that is fun. Me up. It's fun as fuck. I didn't know they made those. Those things okay, are good. I'll just sit between mm. you guys and eat my muffins while you guys talk. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, we just came out with these um, dog biscuits. Mm -hmm. They are oatmeal flavor. Oatmeal. Janelle Ooh. literally has tried one. <laughs> you liked it. Dude, yeah. it was good. You want another bite? Sure, with your Charlie little and bites? I will share. Okay, you and Charlie can split one. Yeah, they were honestly not bad. It's like Scooby Snacks. Mm -hmm. And they're little hearts too, so it's perfect. Yes. Super cute packaging. Can we give a hands up? Hands up. Hands up. Uh, a round of applause is what I was looking for <laughs> to Sydney. Woo! She designed this beautiful packaging. You designed it? Well, yeah, yeah. I just came up like with the concept idea. So yeah. cute. So, um, and then we Here's came out with a, un it's unflavored, but it's just Here's for natural hemp flavor tincture. For pets, the right? thing about Charlie is the dude only has like six teeth. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes him a bit. Oh, he's taking the big piece. It takes him a bit to actually get one of these down. But regardless, he still works it. Oh, he wants to He eat loves it. him. Look at him. He doesn't want to eat on the hard surface. Oh, yeah. He wants to take it to where he can be you safe can with it. You can take it. But he, but he loves, loves them. Oh, he loves them, dude. All of our dogs love yeah. them. Honestly, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Kelly loves them. Yeah. And my cat loves the tincture. Yeah. Yep. They're delicious. Well, I guess I wouldn't know. I haven't tried the tinctures myself, Ew. but they can be tasted. Your boyfriend tasted them. Jared. Yeah, yeah. Jared was like, oh, I'm going to take a little taster of the chicken flavor. What did he think? He's like, oh, well, it smells like chicken. He's like, I don't know if it mm. doesn't really taste a bunch like chicken. But, but probably to the dog, it's chicken. Yeah, I'm like, ew, I was kind of grossed out. But <laughs> And if your pet is, you know, picky or wants, you want to just put it on cat food, wet food, or dogs for wet food, the unflavored works well with any type of food. Yeah. So we have two different potent 
potencies for each flavor. Yep. Um, 500 milligrams is in the 30 milliliter bottle and then 1,000 milligrams in mm-hmm. the 60 milliliter bottle. And just so you know, Higher Love Wellness is a very small company. We don't have any investors. We do everything in-house. We, you know, ship like our team is all family and friends and we're super hands-on with all the decisions and we're super proud of these products. We've worked really hard and now we just celebrated one year of Higher Love Wellness. I know, I cannot believe one year. Our anniversary was Valentine's Day. So yes. yeah, definitely check it out. And code Kendall Ray is running right now for a limited time only where you get 15% off your purchase. So take advantage of that. And we also have a giveaway running right now. Yes, we do. And one of on everything. Your, yes, on your page yep. to enter. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we'll link the uh, raffle copter below so you can enter the giveaway. Yep. All righty. Well, thanks for letting me share. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Charlie wants more. Charlie's so into these, dude. He loves them. When you guys were like testing them out, he's been eating these for months back before it was even finalized. Yeah, he he went through a rigorous testing process. He says, (laughs) "Okay, not tested on animals, though." You know, (laughs) (laughs) testing, taste testing, taste testing, and he is a big fan. He yeah. loves them. He loves them, clearly. He's looking for more right yeah, now. Yeah, he is. He ate the whole thing. Good He's boy, like, BBs. Bro. Wait, did you try one, Janelle? No, I didn't eat big. one. I ate one on Mile Higher. If you want to see me eat it, yeah. go check out Mile Higher. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to waste we it. promo them, yeah, I want now you to I need one. to eat them. Great. <laughs> Bring in Janelle. <laughs> Bring her in. She needs to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Anyways, uh, yeah, super exciting stuff. Yeah. So go check it I out. love it. What else is on the agenda today? Um, so you guys sent in hella questions yeah. on our form mm-hmm. about sex. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we went through them or Corelli picked about 50 of them. Uh, there were literally like a thousand. There of were them, a thousand plus. Yeah. Wow. So thanks for That's great, participating. Guys. It was fun to look through them. I wish we could pick more because there were some there were some really spicy ones that might mm-hmm. have to do another episode. It's gonna get spicy today. You guys don't even know yeah. oh, we're what gonna kind of spicy shit could come out of our mouth today. Um and then what else do we have? We need to talk about Oh yeah. Shall we begin with Kim that? Kim and Kanye speaking yes. of spicy. Uh yeah. before we get into this, just a heads up, we do talk about some harassment and such. So if you don't want to hear that, there's timestamps below. You can skip it. Like stalker behavior, honestly. Yeah, just be definitely triggering to some. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So anyways, um, obviously, Kim and Kanye are going through a divorce. There's no hiding that. Um, and, and according to Kanye, they're having the best divorce ever. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> He's like, we'll go to court. We'll go to court together. <laughs> and matter of fact, we'll go to court's house and pick her up or something. <laughs> Okay, I don't, I don't think that, that was like Courtney Kardashian. No, I know Pick I get it, up. but it's like still doesn't make sense. He just thought it was cool because it court and court. Wow. <laughs> well, he's a lyrical wow, genius. He's a lyrical oh, right. genius. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Um. Anyway, so yeah, obviously they have been beefing publicly. Yeah. And he has been really off his rocker as of recently. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Last time we talked about how he got in trouble for punching an autograph collector. Uh, He wasn't invited to Chicago's party. That was a big deal. And then he also had the uh, interview with Hollywood Unlocked, which received a lot of mixed feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, Then earlier this month, he asked the internet for advice on how to approach the fact that North is on TikTok against his will. Right, right. We didn't talk about that. No, we hadn't. The last time we spoke about Kanye was the whole birthday party debacle. We were talking about co-parenting and we were trying to play devil's advocate for Kanye. We were trying to give him the benefit of the right. doubt. We really yeah, you were. you and Crowley were doing, yeah. 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 Well, we were just trying to see it from other sides yeah. that, you know, he wants to see his kids. But like, sure. at the same time, we knew he punched someone out the night before the party. Right. So it makes yeah. sense why she didn't want him there. He like, Popolotsky'd was. Yeah, he <laughs> Popolotsky'd Pop- someone. Popolotsky, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. 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 So, yeah, he's he's totally fucking out of control just say it how it is it's gotten so much worse it's gotten scary i mean it's it's not even at all funny anymore at this point it's just it's no it's stalking, really it's yeah. abuse it's harassment and he's totally out of line yeah majorly and the excuse of having a mental health mm-hmm. crisis yeah while yes i do agree that mental health is yeah. playing into this that does oh, not yeah. automatically excuse you for harassing people and having no. terrible behavior 
No. Um, I do think he needs help and there's nothing wrong with needing help. But yeah. again, you know, you can't just be like, oh, it's because he's right. having a manic episode. Well, even if that's true, that's still not appropriate. You know? Yeah. I was saying something about Kanye on Twitter and someone was responding to me, calling me an ableist for having any criticism against Kanye. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, no, that's not how this works. It doesn't excuse someone acting like this. It's not... I mean, oh, just can you imagine? A lot of people... He has like an army behind, yeah. behind him. Yeah. You know what's crazy is that he gained like almost a million subscribers in a couple of days since he's been like popping off. Subscribers? Like, up, uh, like sorry, followers. followers. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. On YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> on Instagram, he had like... I think yeah. he was at like 10 or like 11 or something. You know, he's like almost at 14. Wow. I'm not surprised because yeah. people want to follow the T. Yeah, when of he's course. They want to see it. And it's Especially he was posting like reading. every few hours yeah. on... Yeah, he was trending over the Super Bowl. He was all proud of that. He was so proud of that. Yeah, he mm -hmm. was talking about... Um, hold on, I have it in here. He took a screenshot, basically. And then, yeah, it's Kanye first, then the Super Bowl. And he says, I didn't wake up and fight for my family to trend over the Super Bowl, but it happened. The Super Bowl brings families together for everyone married. Hold your spouse close and make sure they know how much you love and appreciate them because there's a because <laughs> there's a skeet lurking in every. T <laughs> OK, so he's calling Pete Davidson skeet now. <laughs> it's kind of funny, because but. there's a skeet lurking in every dirty fucking alley waiting to help destroy your family and walk around in that Calvin Klein's around your children. I wish my wife was with me and our children sitting at the 50 yard line. Kim Car at Kim Kardashian. Always remember Wes was your biggest W. Excuse me. What the fuck? Pete did not ruin anything. You ruined your marriage, dude. You fucking ruined it. See, Pete wasn't even involved. Yeah, I, was no. say, I don't think Pete had anything to do with ruining Absolutely your marriage. Absolutely not. You and Kim were not doing well long before Pete came into the picture. Yeah, and I think last time when he had just mentioned Pete in the song lyric, we talked about how Pete did an interview saying that mm. he thought it was kind of funny and mm -hmm. he's like not offended by it. He's like, whatever. But yeah, I yeah. think at this point, like, it sounds like Kim's concerned. Oh, yeah, Kim's concerned. The amount uh, of people he's sending against him at this point. Uh-huh. Scary. How about the fact that he went after Billie Eilish? Oh, yeah. When she was performing. <sighs> Stupid. Uh, and now apparently is refusing to perform at Coachella mm -hmm. until she publicly apologizes to Travis Scott for apparently shading him. It has nothing to do with yeah. fucking Kanye anyway. Someone in the audience needed an inhaler and yeah. she stopped the show and then she goes at know, her shows. They wait for say, people to be OK before they go on. Yep. And she's like, I didn't even mention Travis, which I mean, just because he didn't mention him, I can kind of like. I mean, yeah, obviously. But like, you don't need to say sorry for that. No, no fuck you don't. That. No, I, don't, I agree. Absolutely not. And who cares if Kanye's at. Coachella. Like Coachella. <laughs> I mean, who cares? Seriously, who cares? You, I, yeah. Not I agree. enough that Billy's going to apologize. What is it? No sweat off her back. She doesn't give a fuck. Right. Well, also, it has nothing to do with him. It's not yeah. like she was dissing him. No, it's so immature. He's has so nothing to do with immature. him. It's unbelievable. And, tr and going after a woman like that, of course. Oh, yeah. You know? And trying to have some power move like, I'm not going to do this until you do this. You're like, fuck off, dude. No, she, she doesn't, doesn't owe you shit. shit. By the way, her perfume is so good. I'm wearing it today. Oh, she is it really? Perfume. Can I mm -hmm. smell? Can smell? I kind love like vanilla -y. Ooh, It smells good. I love that bottle. Warm. Isn't it pretty? Mm -hmm. mm. It's only I... like 60 bucks at Ulta, you guys. Hop on it. I love her. She's amazing. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Um. So anyways, he's also has beef now with Kid Cudi because oh, this on Sunday, funny. this was really funny. So uh, last Sunday, the 13th, he basically blew up at him because he's friends with Pete Davidson. Skeet, you mean? Skeet. So he posted a picture. What does Skeet mean? Is that like, like, what is it? A, what? Can you look that up? Is All that like I know a is, dictionary? Oh, skeet, skeet, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, I, th I think it's, uh, you know. Excrement? Excrement. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking it up. It doesn't even say anything. What is Skeet? It's like it's the picture of Soulmate. E -T. S Soulmate? S -K -W -E. How does he spell it? a diss. Yeah, I know. S K E E T. S K. Oh, it says Pete Davidson. Yeah. <laughs> that definitely. Uh -huh. This is an Urban Dictionary. <laughs> oh, Pete. <laughs> Shut up! It has Pete Davidson on Urban. <laughs> he probably thinks it's funny. This dude has such a good sense of humor. He oh, probably yeah. does think it. I mean, not the harassment's going too far, but the, the name. I'm sure Wait. he got a little laugh out of it. He's uh, hilarious. The name of the yeah, the amazing. username is uh, Skeet Davidson. <laughs> Davidson. <laughs> hey. Oh uh, my God. Okay. Anyways, so he posts a picture. 
Which, by the way, this picture, he fucking X's out Skeet's face. <laughs> and there's Kid Cudi next to him. Dude, he looks like such a soul. And he loser. says, Thank God. I'm very community oriented. I love my friends. I love my family. The reason I asked Cudi to take to at least speak to Skeet is because for years, Cuddy always made it seem like it was me and him against everyone. Now that I'm fighting for my family, he is not by my side. This is bigger than music. Yeah, and to preface this, it started with him calling Kid Cuddy out, saying that he was friends with Pete, right. so he's not going to be on Donda 2. Yeah, Donda 2, <laughs> yeah. And then fucking Kid Cuddy tweets out or something. He goes, yeah. too bad I don't want to be on your album, you fucking dinosaur. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Everyone knows I've been the best thing about your album since I True. met you. I'm a pray for Tequila Dude, shots. I fucking love Kid Cuddy. Mm-hmm. He is amazing. He's a king. Anyways, yeah, he's um, does not need no. He does not need his ass. This is just ass. so embarrassing. It's just, it's kind of, it's sad. Like, bro, what are you fucking doing? I know. Wait, oh my god, and really all bad. the caps. He's like aggressive message. Oh it's yeah, so cringe. All caps and the screenshots. He doesn't even crop them right. He's just like throwing shit up there to millions of people. It's wild. Did you see the the meme that he posted? Um, let me find it real quick. The Civil War one. No, what is that? Oh, oh yeah. He posted that? He posted yeah. Drake's in it? God. Yeah, it's Drake. Oh uh, and then God. what's her face? Julia Fox. And then Travis Scott. And then who's at the very back? Uh, Taylor, Swift. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is in there. Billie Eilish <laughs> is in there. Kid Cudi's in there. Kim's in there. And then Skeet's at the front. Julia Fox. <laughs> they broke up, too. Yeah, they broke the up recently. Now. Yeah, They're, Even though she just How said long? they were in a relationship. I on. know. How long were they together for? Like two weeks? Yeah, like, probably. Yeah, she goes on call her daddy. Y'all like, would love if I was so upset. The media would love to paint a picture of me, a sad and lonely woman crying on a plane no, by myself, wouldn't. but it's no not cares, true. Though. Why not see me for what I am, which is a number one hustler? I came I came <sighs> up, y'all, lol. And not only that, did. but Kanye and I are on good terms. I love having I have love for him, but I wasn't in love with the man. Jesus Christ, what do you think I am? Twelve years old. And for the record, the only time I mm. cried in twenty twenty two was on February sixth on my dead BFF B Day. Oh, okay. Sad. Anyway, oh if you want the full tea, you're gonna have to buy the book when it comes out. Oh, nice. Get a the book plug in there, baby. <laughs> the classic. God, I can't stop thinking about that sound that keeps going around of from the interview where she's like, I'm like Josh Safty's muse on Uncut Jams. Wait, what? <laughs> we never heard that <laughs> in the podcast. That she's like, uh, what's her name? The girl on Clar Daddy. What's oh, her name? Alex? Alex. Alex. She like asked her, like, are you Kanye's? Do you think you're Kanye's muse? And she's like, yes. I mean, I was. John Shafty's, Josh Shafty's muse. Uh, who <laughs> the fuck is Uncut Jams? Julia. Julia Fox. Jams. And then everyone keeps doing it on TikTok and they're like, Jams. Oh my God. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching so many of them last oh, night. Oh, dear. Yeah, that interview Lord. was. Ooh, my brain was melting. All I got to say. Nice girl, very pretty. I only listened to like half of it. <laughs> nice girl, very pretty. Yeah, very gorgeous skin. Good great model. skin. Very, yep, modely. Um, well, but okay. it was funny. I honestly thought it was funny. I listened interview. to like the first half and I was just like, girl, you are not interesting to me. Yeah, Anyways. she's not, she not very interesting. I agree with that. Uh, then it went on because people were like, holy shit, this is so crazy. And they felt like uh, Kanye had been fucking uh, hacked. So then he went on and he's holding up this picture. <laughs> Um, he's holding up this fucking yellow notepad and it says, my account is not hacked, 213.22. And he goes, my account is not hacked. I will be at Sunday service at noon and we'll be talking to, and we'll be taking North and Saint to the Super Bowl shortly after. Blah, blah, blah. So there you go. He's not hacked. Um, and the Super Bowl happens. But then the like post just said. started, I feel like the more people were gassing him up about these posts. And at first, I think it was kind of like funny to people that he was yeah. posting memes and stuff, but then he started getting really aggressive about it. And some people are still, you know, gassing him yeah. up for that. And it's just like, it's really disappointing to see how many people are just eating this shit up mm-hmm. and thinking it's hilarious and following his every move because it's obviously encouraging him to go further and further with it. Yep. And like we said, it's becoming it's becoming dangerous. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you have some of these recent screenshots. Yeah, this is where it gets... This is scary, guys. So he, this is hard to keep track of like what screenshot was posted when because it's all deleted now. So it's all around the same yeah. you know, few days here that he's yeah. posting all these things. One of them being a picture of... I don't even know what this is from. It's like some meme of someone being yeah. choked. Mm-hmm. And that's the first slide. And then the second slide is, um, well, what says Kim's other phone. And it says, you are creating a dangerous and scary environment and someone yeah. will hurt Pete and this will all be your fault. Um, and then his 
caption says, upon my wife's request, please nobody do anything physical to ski. I'm going to handle the situation myself. That's what I mean. Like, you can't Dude. post that with a picture of someone choking someone. And the, you know what? That's this so is threatening. So disappointing considering that he was by her side when she was held at gunpoint. And then yeah. now he's treating her this way. It's like, well, that's like, you know the trauma she's been through. Oh, yeah. That is triggering because, like, he, like, I feel like people have been kind of like mean or like they haven't been as empathetic with Kim mm -hmm. no, because she's, she's Kim like, Kardashian. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that's like, it, that does literally does not matter because no. she's still being harassed. She still has kids. Like, yep. she's still, like, she is still a human being no matter your feelings about her. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and this is so fucking scary. Like, she's, she's like in, like, she's in danger. Yeah, and for, you know, for people to always feel the need to preface, I don't like Kim, but this isn't, it's just like, dude, shut up. If then. anything, I yeah. think it really paints a picture because Kim is Kim K, so she has all access to all the resources she could mm -hmm. possibly need, and she still can't get away from him. She He also so posted like, this one saying uh, from Kim, why why can't you keep our conversations private? Oh, right, and which right, is right. so patient. She's been so patient. I, w I was just telling Janelle, I'd be like, Ripping I'm going to drag in. your ass through court like you're fucking done. But um, he says, because I got a text from my favorite person in the world. I'm your number one fan. Why wouldn't I tell everyone? What kind of fu that fucking language that makes my skin crawl. That's yeah. so condescending and like, oh, so, yeah. Ugh. And it's just creepy. I'm your number one fan. Fuck right I off, know. dude. You are so weird. You are never getting back together with her. And then trying to be like, uh, we're going to get back together. I know I saw something yesterday. I can't even remember. It's hard to keep track, like you said, but he was like, you know, we're going to save this family. And I know I have confidence we'll be together one day. And it's like, dude, no, absolutely not. Mm. That's it's done. Yeah. There's another screenshot of a text where she says he says something up above. But you can't read anything except for of love and consideration to all my posts. And then she says, well, thank you. There are dangerous people out there and this is scary and it doesn't have to be. And he goes, I will always do everything to protect you and our family forever. <laughs> And I listened to you and told everyone to make sure nothing ha physical happens to skeet. Which is just in enlightening the, I don't know if enlightening is the right word. Like, that's not even a word, huh? Enlightening? Uh, enlightening? I meant Enlight like lighting the fire. Lighting the fire. Yeah. Igniting. 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 Thank you. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Igniting Pregnancy the fire. Brain, it's real bad. But yeah, I think that's kind of just pushing it even further. Oh, here we go. So then she... There's um, a picture that came out of her and uh, Pete going to dinner or something. And she's in this really cool, like, oh, sparkly yeah. coat. Like, I bought this. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I don't have beef with Kim. I love my family. So stop that narrative. That's I'm not one. giving up on my family. I, I bought this coat for Kim before SNL. I thought it was particularly special. I have faith that we'll be back together. I never had anything against Daily Mail. I got love for everyone in the media. And I wish you all the happiness in the world. Blah, 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 blah. And it's just kinda, okay. yeah. so rambly. I find it interesting that he's going so hard after Pete when he, I mean, clearly he didn't think they were, he was not trying to save things since he had this girlfriend that he's been toting around yeah. and making super public and that's not yeah, an issue. It's just like, okay, so it's only an issue when she moves on. Yeah. Good fucking point. So True. Bad. Is it because she initiated the divorce? Like <laughs> his ego's hurt guys. Something's hurt. He's, he's clearly, I mean, like we said, we know he's got mental illness. He's been public about that. Mm -hmm. And we feel for him in that sense. But mm -hmm. it's like it go it gets to a point where there is no excuse for your behavior no matter what. And it can't be tolerated. It's gotta be spoken out against. Mm -hmm. I mean yeah, has Pete said anything about it? Like I don't, posted anything or not really. responded? I don't not think that so. I know of. I mean, he's like a pretty low-key dude he's not the type to be oh, yeah i read something that he barely is on social media so he like barely knows what's going on i don't know how much mm. i believe that because yeah. what in the fuck but I don't know. Um, like it's a waste of my time like or yeah yeah well, i just want to entertain i mean i think also all, like you said all these people like reposting or like making this big deal that's exactly what he wants totally yeah that is exactly what he wants and he probably wants pete to like get in on it and yeah, start right. posting and get the beef going right yeah, and then on Valentine's Day, he fucking sends Kim a huge truck full of roses. And the on the oh. truck, it says, my vision is crystal clear. Oh, and you... Oh, yeah, that's that's just so it's creepy. So but you know what also just came to me is I saw a post yesterday on his Instagram that included like an article or some, some tabloid-esque article of Ariana and Pete when they were together. It said something along the lines of Ariana found out that... He had Pete had 
like basically used her and Mac Mac uh Mac Miller's family is upset about it and she found out from his family and it's just like wow now you're dra- dragging in Mac Miller. Yeah. It's just so it's like what seriously Who can't what even, is isn't going here to speak your head? for himself and dragging watching. out these tabloids when it's like you've been a victim of tabloids you know how full of shit they are oh yeah and and you're just reposting this garbage yet you're criticizing the media all the time and just none, none of his nothing makes sense no what he's doing well as of a few hours ago on fit when we we're recording this february 15th he deleted all of his pictures and then posted this, which is oh, like this, this is very like okay. It's very like this looks like he's in heaven or something. Let's see what he says. Yeah, I've learned and that this is using all, all this is the caps. first one and not in caps. It's in it's okay regular. that we were just saying yep. enough with the caps, bro. I've learned that using all caps makes people feel like I'm screaming at them. <laughs> Amazing concept. I'm working on my communication. I can benefit from a team of creative professionals, organizers, mobilizers, and community <laughs> leaders. <laughs> That's what lowercase sounds like, okay? <laughs> Thank everybody for supporting me. I know sharing screenshots was a little jarring and came across as harassing Kim. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was harassing Kim. It's not comes across. across that way. It's harassing to millions of people. I take accountability. Good, bitch. <laughs> I'm still learning in real time. I don't have all the answers. To be a good leader is to be a good listener. Okay. Well, um, a little too late, bro. I see that as, oh, fuck, this could turn legal. Mm-hmm. I need to try and save my ass. So did you see he was in a McDonald's commercial yeah. for the Super Bowl? Yeah. I wonder what McDonald's was thinking. Like, of course, we we give him this huge promo. And the day that this shit goes live, he's just popping the fuck off. Yeah, I know. I know. They're like, God damn. You really had to do that, Kanye. He posted on Instagram another picture of himself and he mentions how he was in the Super Bowl commercial with McDonald's. And the top comment is McDonald's meal. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) Honestly, I just take back what I said because I bet McDonald's doesn't give a fuck either way. They're like, more more eyes on us. Yeah, McDonald's doesn't give a fuck. More people to his page. Oh my God. Let me go on his Instagram and see if anything else updated as far as because he updates shit all the time. Oh, boom. He just posted something three hours ago. Ooh. Okay. He says sent, it's a screenshot. Lower and case it's, or caps? This is low, lower case. Okay. He's sent, keeping it chill now. The caption says, sent to me from my cousin Dre, written by Frida Bailey, who worked for Adidas. Oh, more exposés. Okay. This is the way. Lead with love. The beauty only you can summon. Openness to learn and creative intelligence from highest self versus frustration, ego, distraction, pr- pr- Provocation, prov. Um, pro- let me try. <laughs> provocation, prov, provocation, provocation. provocation. Wow, That's horrible okay. at reading. That's okay. good for me. Souls are exhausted right now. They crave soulful leaders, lovers, visionaries who are at peace, clear and free, in harmony with themselves first. They are the only, or they are the ones truly in power, standing on top of the world. She will come back as God intends. What will be different? Be gentle. Be patient. Keep growing. We are rooting for you, your peace, your family, and everyone else's. God bless us all. So he's not exposing. He's just like. So this is sent from Cousin Dre, written by someone who worked for Adidas. Okay. Why do we care? Moving on. She will come back. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about they. <sighs> yeah. I um. I really feel for Kim in this moment. I really do. It's got to be so stressful, especially having kids involved and you want to protect them. It's got to be embarrassing for, at least for North. She must have some idea what's going on. I don't totally. know how much internet access she does or has, but I mean, if she doesn't know now, she'll probably hear stuff one day and it's just like, it's sad. I it's- just wonder what she, because they don't get, they're not homeschooled. I'm pretty sure they go to a school. Yeah. And I wonder what her classmates like tell her. And oh, stuff. I'm sure they tell her things. Yeah. And it's like, I'm sure that's something Kim's weighing. Like, is it worth even having her get getting the public school experience if she's going to get exposed to all these things or, you know, how much can it, but like, how much can you keep from her when eventually she's going to be an adult? She's going to be able to have access to this and she's going to see her dad do stuff. I mean, he's likely not going to stop. No. Plus, I mean, this isn't the first case of kids being involved in a divorce, right? Not, I mean, we really don't know. Maybe she's being 
really hidden from it, but it's very common for yeah, kids who are in the midst of a divorce. But how common is it, it for it to be blasted to millions of people? No. And how common is it for your dad to write a fucking song lyric dissing you yeah. for being spoiled? Right. Yeah. What? Yeah. What was that? It was unreal. I'm like, dude, you're dissing yourself just yeah. as much as your kid. Like, Seriously. it's not the kid's fault. I was going to say, spoiled. He, raised, he raised them, too. Yeah. Like, it's not. It wasn't just Kim. Yep. Calling that. Calling them unruly. Bougie. Bougie. So, anyways, yeah. Yeah, very really sad, sad situation, honestly. It's like, it, yeah. It's just gone so far at this point that it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. I think everyone's just kind of hit that point. Well, obviously not everyone, since a lot of people are still following it, liking it, encouraging his ass. But, oh, yeah. A lot of people, I'm seeing a lot more conversation online about, like, this is, this is too fucking Well, much. at first it was like, LOL, P yeah. and Kim dating. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, Kanye's pissed. But now it's kind it's of a joke. It. Now it's not a joke. And when you're yeah, blasting I do worry private for, shit. Uh, Pete's safety. I mean, to be honest, that's I'd yes. be worried if I were him. Yeah, I would too. <sighs> because scary shit. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially when you're a celebrity, mm -hmm. you have power. There are tons of people who follow Kanye that are pissed oh, off. Yeah. And I'm it sure only takes one to... person to do something. Totally. I bet he's had to really up his security since being with Kim, and especially since all this started. Yeah. Ooh, and it's so like it's even scarier thinking that he lives across the street from them now. Oh yeah, that's that's awful. that's creepy too. Is that for sure? Or did he just say that? Like, I wonder if he really... I think he owns the house across the okay. street. I don't know if he lives there. Like, yeah. Maybe he doesn't live there. He probably has multiple houses. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The whole thing's fucked. Yeah, it is fucked. We send our, our prayers and thoughts and prayers to thoughts Kim. Thoughts and prayers. Yeah. It, I mean, legitimately. No, though. really, I do feel bad for her. Yeah. Hopefully I do they too. can figure out a way to handle this more privately. Yeah. Well, I think she's trying to do that and it's clearly not working with him because he's going to do what he's going to fucking do because he knows he's going to get a reaction. It, like, I feel like for him... He, any attention from her is good attention. He just wants to get any type of a reaction out of her. Yeah, she, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyway, so, let's get into some fun. This is starting to bum me out. Sex, baby. Let's sex, talk baby. about sex. But let's before do we do, let's go ahead and thank our first sponsors for the day. So if you've been watching my content for a long time, you know that I have been sponsored by Audible for a long time on my channel, both of my podcasts. And I always like to work with Audible because it's something that I truly love. I use Audible all the time because frankly, reading is just not an enjoyable experience for me. Being dyslexic makes it just so much harder and it takes so much longer and I often don't comprehend things as well. I'm just such an auditory person that listening to an audiobook is so much better for me. Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in just one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover with Audible. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre from bestsellers to new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and more. Audible also includes thousands of podcasts from popular favorites to exclusive new series. And as an Audible member, you get one title a month and you get to keep that. And you can choose from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Members also get full access to a growing selection of included audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts. And you can download or stream their included titles all you want. The Audible app makes it super easy to listen anytime, anywhere, while traveling, working out, walking, doing the chores, you decide. And new members can try Audible free for 30 days. So you guys want to take advantage of that deal because it's awesome. So get started at audible.com slash sesh or text sesh to 500-500. That's audible.com slash sesh or text sesh to 500-500. Hello, Fresh, one of our tried and true sponsors here on the Sesh. Uh, we genuinely love HelloFresh around here. It is the freshest, most delicious meal delivery kit, in my opinion. HelloFresh delivers pre portioned ingredients to your door, including farm fresh produce that arrive within a week, so you get convenience without skimping on quality. Skip the trip to the grocery store, saving you the wait in long lines and ensuring you don't waste money on excess food. That's the most annoying thing in my opinion, is if a recipe calls for cilantro, you have to buy a giant head, when in reality, you only need a few tablespoons. But with HelloFresh, everything's pre-portioned, exactly how you need it. And something that's really cool about HelloFresh is they're really starting to make it more and more customizable. You can now customize your favorite dishes with their new Hello Custom offerings by swapping out one protein or side for another, upgrading for a more luxe experience, or even adding protein to a veggie meal. That means more choices, more variety, and more meals truly tailored to you. 
And HelloFresh has a huge variety to choose from. There's over 50 menu and market items every single week, including veggie, fit and wholesome, family friendly and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. I know I've said this before, but I will say a hundred times more. I genuinely love HelloFresh. I think it is such a great service. It's delicious. It's easy. It teaches you how to cook. And even if you're already a good cook, I really like it because it gives you more ideas on how you can spice up your everyday dishes and what ingredients you can put together to make things a little bit more unique. So go to HelloFresh.com slash SESH16 and use code SESH16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Go to HelloFresh.com slash SESH16 and use code SESH16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right, for this next segment, well, all of our show, please make sure your children are not in the room. Yeah, seriously, this, this is, is not an adult a kid, conversation. <laughs> this is never a kid show. We're going to be using big people words. Big people words. So we're getting down and dirty today. <laughs> the first question is, explain sex to us like we are five. Okay, this one's funny because I vividly remember how my mom explained it to me when I was a kid. Mm. One day we were in the car and I was in the back seat and I was like, so how the fuck does this shit all work? But I was still pretty young and she goes, <laughs> you said it like that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I'm like, mom, how the fuck does this shit all work? But I asked that, you know, something along the lines of that. Mm -hmm. And she responded with, well, you know, she's like, when two well, people. You know, <laughs> I see we keep it. Sorry. I don't care about Kifa. You know, in your car. Okay. Anyways, uh, she goes, well, when two people love each other so much, they want to get really close to each other. <laughs> oh, she was like, like really big it. cuddling, like really cuddling so close. Then she goes like, sometimes that you're so close that you almost are inside of each other. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been like trying to rack your brain I did. I was that. like, what in the fuck? I was like, hey. What <laughs> hug is this? I was like, huh, interesting. Uh, but yeah, that's how I first, that's what she told me. It was so funny. God, the way I found out is honestly kind of creepy. Kind of creepy. Really? Yeah. This kid in my neighborhood uh, was babysitting for me. And he was like maybe eighth grade and I was in fifth grade. Okay. And he told me like sex that is coming up because in fifth grade is like the first big oh, yeah. thing, which was more about like reproduct. Like, yeah. What a period is. What like um, yep. a lot of going through like puberty. Puberty stuff. Yeah. Yep. yep. So I remember he was like, I'll tell you what sex is and I was like okay sounds good and so after my sister went to sleep he let me stay up later I said I mean this is creepy I know it's it's very weird How I don't think he, he had weird intentions okay this was How a family old friend was he like eighth grade I was fifth ew I know he was like <laughs> so was that like 14 years old <laughs> this 13 the, 14 now that this is coming okay, out I'm like, this like, is strange. I thought he was like 20 or something like, no eh. he was like he also was a kid yeah okay and so he's also I grew a kid. up with him and whatever so okay we were in the basement and I remember I like hid behind a chair because I didn't want to oh, look at course. him while he was telling me right and he just he said I'll never forget it he said a man's wang <laughs> and <there's> the woman's <laughs> vagina I was like I was like try, I had never even heard wang I was like what wang, <laughs> oh, wang. and then it's I was just like so like I remember like squirming like what like it goes in there what the <laughs> hell and then when my mom got home he was babysitting us so she got home that night and i was still up and i was like mom what you're not gonna book? believe it he just told me <laughs> <laughs> so then she was backed into her corner and that's when we went to the library and got a book and yeah and then i exposed the book to his younger brother <laughs> he was over one day and i was like you gotta see this book he stole it from my mom's bed and me and him looked at it together. He's <laughs> come full circle. Exactly. Holy shit, that's it's all his hilarious. Fault. Honestly, his mom. Was it can... the book about you? Yeah. With like the three girls it. and a yeah, towel. The towel. Oh, I, yes, I know exactly. I feel like what everyone had that fucking book. I never read that book. <laughs> My mom gave it to yeah. me. Like she kind of explained things. She was like, "Here's this book." She's like, "You can read it." She's like, "Let me know if you have any questions." I remember reading. There's this one page where it like has the uh -huh. drawing of the vagina yes. going with the tampon, yeah. and I was like. Oh, yeah. I was like, what in the fuck is going on? I'm like, I'm not inserting that over. Yep. That sounds horrible. Oh, my God. I remember. Oh, yeah. Seeing that for the first time. Like, that's going to pictures of the boobs. Me? I was like, what in the hell? No, I'm not doing that. I'm exempt from that. No I'm way. Exempt. I will not be participating. Yeah. I remember being pretty freaked out. But yeah, it's pretty weird that he told me that. I truly don't think he had any creepy intentions. No. I think he just was like a boy that yeah. like, wanted to like. An eighth grade boy. boy. <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell a girl. Like, so. Yeah, no hate to him. He's a nice guy. No hate, as if we even know who you're talking about. Yeah, oh, that's true. boy. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. So I guess to explain it to you guys, that's how I would say it. The wang goes in the vagina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like... And that's how babies are made. Our babies here. <laughs> it's just like your, your boss. boss. <laughs> Name that movie. 
Uh, I think they'll be able to figure it out. Yeah, the only, only the movie tr- you can quote. <laughs> 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 so many choices. <laughs> the only movie I've ever watched. Um, yeah, that's, I'd probably explain it like that. Yeah. Hopefully that was enough explaining for you. Okay. In your opinion, how many times a week do you think a couple should have sex? Curious because my husband and I are on different pages with this one. Oh, okay. This is, I feel like, such a common, like, wonder, mm-hmm. I guess, people have. Like, or like the concern. right number? Right. Especially if you guys are on different pages. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's also really common for partners yep. to be on, you know, have different sex drives. And also the fact that, like, you your sex drive, I don't think, is the is constant throughout your whole life. That's like very there's true. sometimes in mine where it's like much lower in my life and then some, you know, depending on mental health, depending on medication, oh, so just true. depending on s- different situations of mm-hmm. like, you know, just different seasons of life, you desire different things or more so than the other. You know what I mean? So I feel like it's such a hard question to be like, how many times should you have mm-hmm. sex? Because there's no right or wrong answer. Like some people fuck like rabbits like three times a day i'm sure but some people maybe don't have sex <laughs> often. Goes, Jeez, Jeez. that's a lot <laughs> <laughs> three times a day i think that's so true like over the years for josh and i it's always like varied yeah, yeah. depends on the season. several factors yeah I, and i think i don't think that, there is an answer to that which i feel bad being like i don't know different it depends on each person because that's like how helpful is that but at the same time I think if anything, it's a conversation you should have with your partner because their opinion is really the only other thing that matters between the two of you. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I completely agree. So. And to just be like gentle with yourself about it. If it's not the same number as your partner, then that's that's okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the right person will understand and accommodate you. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's another big thing is like just because maybe you and your partner don't have this exact same like desires that that doesn't mean that you can't mm-hmm. like it doesn't mean that you guys are not compatible to be in a relationship or whatever you know mm-hmm. what i mean mm-hmm. i think the most important thing is being able to openly communicate what you want and vice versa mm-hmm. and respecting that it might be different you know yeah i agree anyway okay thoughts and feelings on music or tv being in the background mm. what do you think guys um, I don't really ever have music. It's not my vibe, but I know people use it. Like, that's do you have TV? Pop- yeah, sometimes. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we do I both. mean, Netflix and chill. The fuck? I don't think we ever do silence, though, to be honest. Wait, you, like, I turn on, you, like, will turn on TV or music? No, yeah. like, we really, if it's watching off, TV. Though. Oh, if it's off, I don't turn it on. No, I just, like, leave Kendall, it off. do you turn it on? If the TV's already on? No, no, if it's off and... You get, you're getting no. Freaky. If it's off, I don't like turn it on. Oh, for that. you're like hold on. <laughs> but I will with music. Oh. Pretty much always have music. Huh? Oh. Do you okay. go to the music? Yeah. What kind of, is it? Like, do you like go to music? Like or a playlist? It's not me. It's Josh. Oh. <laughs> he has the like music. A, I wonder if there's like a sex playlist play like, out there. Eh, there might Wicked. be. There I'm might sure be. there are. <laughs> uh, I actually take that back. One time I played the um, Fifty Shades of Grey soundtrack. <laughs> oh. That's spicy. Isn't that original? <laughs> nice. Very original and creative. Wait, what about you guys? Music or TV? Silence? I mean, normally we've got the TV on, like, mm-hmm. but I in don't like go noise. and turn it on. Yeah. Like, like let me find a good show. We for need this. the yeah. animal planet. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> thinking about it, it's silent. Okay. Really? Unless, like, unless, like, the, the music or TV is already on, but, like, we, like, for me, mm-hmm. I'm usually, like, we usually don't have like the, the TV on or music playing. Like it's usually pretty silent in our house. Mm. I've had yeah. Si- yeah, yeah, silent sex. It's kind of fun. I've done it a few times. Yeah. I mean, music is preferred, but I like the music for sure. I, I feel weird in the silence, and our ugh, our dog will be annoying. I think if it's okay. too quiet, yeah. he gets annoying. Wait, wait, wait. We this could be a whole fucking podcast episode on itself yeah. with trying to make love. With your fucking pets, <laughs> pets around. Oh, yeah. my God. Because they need no work. asshole during it. They're so they're fucking barking annoying. at us. <laughs> oh, they ju- they stand on the bed and just look at us and try and, like, yeah. get in our faces. I'm like, yeah. dude. We have to kick them off the bed. Yes, we kick ours off. Times. Yeah, I kicked. And then Sadie they goes around. and hides. Like, she'll go in the closet. <laughs> she like, and no, she looks upset. Like, she's like, oh. And then afterwards, she looks, like, traumatized. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Dude, 
<laughs> yeah, we normally have to kick all the cats out, shut the door. Bernie has to be in there or he'll bark. But he'll sometimes sit on the floor and bark at us. And sometimes we just have You're to like, let it happen. What are you going to do? Like, we'll yell at him though and be like, you asshole. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes we'll give them bones to like distract them or something. Yeah, we do that too. We're like, oh, oh go get a, a, what are those called? Bully stick. But, yeah, uh-huh. They Ridiculous. do give you like judgy eyes though sometimes. Totally oh, yeah. judgy and eyes. And they know what's happening. They oh, yeah. totally know. They're like, oh, you guys are fucking animals. <laughs> yeah, they're like, Wait, nasty. My cat but you recently got- my balls off. Yes, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> my cat recently got uh, spayed. Oh. And uh, yeah, she was judging us hard. Yeah, because she's like, you just took my abilities away. I'm going to sit here and ruin your time. Literally. She's like, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. Okay, this, this is, is a wild one. I yeah. can tell by the first sentence. All right. I am starting to catch feelings for my best friend's stepdad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds okay. like a porno there. <laughs> I think yeah. he might be interested as well. Oh, because he makes subtle compliments here and there. I hope... There's like a it says like proper age to me. gap here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, a proper. Yeah. 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 No, uh, we share says. little looks when my friend or her mom aren't looking. We have really great conversations and I really like how supportive, honest and kind he is. He makes me feel better about myself and encourages me to finish school and get my degree. Well, I mean, maybe she's she's got to be. Oh, wait, age here then. He's 41 and I'm 22. OK, because there is an age gap, but there's nothing illegal going on. Nothing illegal. He's hot, LOL. All right. Age gap, 41 to 22. Yeah. I'm really trying not to do anything stupid because I love my friend and I don't want to lose our friendship. I mean, you could. That could hurt her. She might not be cool with that. What if there is something in between me and that person? What mm. should I do? Ah, uh, that's hard. Uh, I mean, wait. we've clearly never been in this situation, so. He's married. Well, we don't know that. It's her step. It says, oh, we step share little looks when, her, when my friend and her mom aren't looking. Oh, this is. Ooh. So they're. So he's married. Yeah, I forgot that. Yeah. That's a Messy. dicey one, girl. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. It may not be worth it. The, the I was stress say, that that could cause you and the, your friendship. How important to you is this friend? And well, also morally. Um, the fact that, you know, if you think if you put yourself in your friend's shoes if mm -hmm. her step parent is cheating on her mom, yeah, that's that going to ruin the friendship for sure. Well, that could just, you know, that could like ruin their the marriage <laughs> and their family, yeah. you know, and cause this I'd be huge, pissed. I'd, I'd be, be pissed. I don't think you should do it, girl. I don't think it's worth it. I mean, you got to decide how much you like this friend. Right. Because I love my friend, don't want to lose our friendship. But what if there is something between and me? You don't want to like him. ruin a marriage. You just don't want that on your conscience. Like, I'd say no. I'd say big no on I that I would one. say no unless like you, unless, unless he, like breaks up yeah. with the, I think it's the fact that he's married. That's because yeah. if we he wasn't married, that. I could feel a little bit more comfortable with being like, well, I, you know, you could be honest yeah. with him and see where that goes. I mean, you can still be honest with him, but I just don't know if that is the best way to go about it when they're, when he's married. Yeah. I say, um, keep trying not to do anything stupid. That's, that's my advice. I don't think that would be smart. And I think, don't you think way, if, like, she's 20 years younger, he's going to easily could do the same thing to her? Yeah, he like, could what makes her, her so too. special? Mm. And also, I think she should just go find someone else. I do too. I don't think it's worth the of people stress out there. of that situation. Like, yeah. how good? How is he worth it? How good is the D? Well, like, well, maybe that's what you're trying to find out. But <laughs> I don't I know if it's, it's worth, not finding, worth out. finding out. I don't think any dick's good enough to do that. No my on opinion. this one, you guys. I'll go find mm -hmm. another D. Yep. Yep. That's all. Agree. A non-married D. Thoughts on contraceptives being pushed solely on women. Also, what contraceptive has worked best for you? Okay, this is... I don't know how I feel about this because I am... If you don't know, if you've never taken birth control, there are fuck ton of side effects that can come along with birth control mm -hmm. many of them negative and unwanted side effects yep. and so it's unfortunate that at least hormonal hormonal birth hormonal <laughs> birth control wow <laughs> is only available for women yeah why that's not fair that we have to deal with all the shitty side effects it was causing a lot of issues for me and to be honest i got off of it way and i'm not 
I mean, I'm I want people to be on birth control if they yeah they sh- oh you know, I'm, I'm pro not birth pushing control. yes yeah. exactly but I I want to be honest about my personal yeah, experience it's not for everyone I was having a lot of those negative side effects and I got off of it and it was huge it, difference re- huge difference and I got off of it way before I even was planning to have a baby so I used other contraceptive methods mm-hmm. and yeah condoms are good too <laughs> I Just mean saying. that's the thing is like if um okay I have. If you, let's say you wanted birth control and Josh had the ability to take the birth mm-hmm. control pill, would you yeah. be down for that? Yeah, and it, Josh would. Josh, he's so awesome. I'm, I'm very lucky. I mean, he didn't, when I went off birth control, he was so supportive of that and was yeah. perfectly Good. fine doing As the alternative, taking that on him. Yeah. And yeah. What about if you're hooking up with a bunch of random people and you come across someone who you're about to have sex with and he's like... Oh, it's chill. I'm on birth control. Do you trust them? Because for us of now, it's up to the woman to, you know, take the birth control, have the birth control. The same thing goes for men. Can they trust their the person that they're hooking up with? Right. I mean, it's almost like... However, they're not the ones getting pregnant. So that's right, a little that's bit of difference. true. But you are going to be fathering a child and sure. there's STDs. So that's it a great doesn't point. really matter, you know? But would you... Tr- like? There's an element of trust on both sides. True. I don't know, though, if I would... If I was seeing multiple people are sleeping with people whatever mm-hmm. i don't know if i would trust a man to tell me especially like maybe once i get to know like if john told me i'd be like okay i trust yeah, you right. but if it was like someone who i don't know and they were like oh i'm on the pill yeah. i'd probably be like eh yeah and that's i don't know about that i mean you could get yourself one of those got it knocked up they call it a dental dam what is it <laughs> a dental dam a female condom yeah like you could use that right. if you wanted to protect yourself on the spot but didn't want to be on hormonal birth control um, but yeah, it's a lot easier for a guy who's, if they're having that same concern of trust, they can always grab a condom and, right, and yeah, yeah. know that they're good and put some hot sauce in there like Drake oh says, and then you're God. really good. <laughs> no, it's whatever happened to that. I was like, I haven't heard a thing since. Because it was bullshit. I haven't heard a thing since. It was God bullshit. damn it. God Anyways, damn. so um, as far as what contraception has worked, I'll tell you my experience. I don't mind talking about it. I think it's interesting to talk about birth control, actually. Um, I've been on birth control since I was like 15 because I've had terrible cramps my whole life. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And not my whole life since I got my period. And so that helped. I was on the pill for a while. I can't remember what it, I've been on several of them, but I get really, really, really bad cramps even with the pill. So then I switched to, what was it? The shot, uh, shot. Depo shot. And that made me have my period for a year straight. <laughs> Oh, so that yeah. was great. That was not fun. So I gave up, and I think it made me have really bad acne too. So I gave up on that. Then I went to Nuvering, and that was okay. I did I that liked for a the bit. Nuvering. Yeah, I liked it. It was easier than the pill. I tried to like never take it out to have a period. Like my whole thing was like I didn't want to have a period because they were just so miserable for mm-hmm. me. So I would try and just keep, you know, three weeks, put another one in, three yep. weeks, put another one in. Which is okay to do. I yeah, mean, you can, I mean, you can do it with the pill too. Puts in, yeah. But... It didn't work. My body was like, yeah, fuck you. We're still going to bleed. So God, then I got the Mirena, sucks. which is a hormonal IUD, and I love it. I've yeah. been on it for a long time. This yeah. is my second one. Hurts when you put it in. but That it does. It. But it's, you lasts know, for it's not five years. Yeah, it lasts years? for now they're saying up to seven years. Wow. And you can take it out whenever and, you know, tr- get pregnant immediately. Mm. And the best part is, is most of the time for hormonal IUDs, not the copper IUD, um, but for like Morena and oh, what's the other one? I don't remember. There's a few out there. Um, it stops your period mm. like pretty much for everyone. Uh, maybe not like right away, but if you, you know, wait it out a few months. So now I don't have nearly as bad of cramps. That's I good. still get cramps. And to be honest, I don't want to like self-diagnose myself or anything, but I do think there's a good chance I have endometriosis. And the diagnosis process for that's very difficult. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of hard to... Yeah get it and convince people you have it and in order to get diagnosed you have to go in for surgery mm-hmm. and but one of my best friends has endometriosis and i talked to her a lot about it and just mm-hmm. have a lot of the symptoms a lot of similar symptoms but yeah. luckily a lot of the time the treatment that they give for people with endometriosis is uh, iud's so mm-hmm. kind of like already using it i guess it's crazy because like every method of birth control affects your body completely like, totally different like i've been mm-hmm. on i've been on birth control same since i was about like 15 mm-hmm. yeah. and i was on the pill for the majority of the time and then like five four or five years ago i did nexplanon which is the one that the bar oh, that you put yeah. in your arm yeah. mm-hmm. I, a little implant yeah i hated it really i fucking hated it it like it 
literally i'm pretty sure like that's what like kickstarted like my de- like deep depression oh god um and i gained like 50 pounds in like the first like six months a year with it i only had it oh for like a year gosh. and a half yeah. Um, I was just so depressed and like mm. I, I have mm. PCOS and it, it wasn't hormonal, so it wasn't helping me in any kind of way. Mm. And yeah, I mean, just like do your research and like if it doesn't work, maybe something else will work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, that's a great point. Like everyone works something works different for everyone. Yeah. I feel like like some people have hated the IUD. It fall if I've known people that uh it falls out. What? Yeah terrible that it's like literally fallen out of their body while they're like uh, in the imp- bathroom so there's next one on and implant on too right yeah there, or is that um, old i remember hearing was that the in old college. one okay next one on kind of like took its place gotcha. i think i don't think they do uh the other one they need implant they on do, they don't do it anymore yeah they do i think it like on now. kind of yeah. caused some issues so oh, well, okay but there's like a th- there's patches there's like the you know there's the pill there's the iud there's rings there's so many different kinds so mm-hmm. i feel like it is worth if one doesn't work and you still want to be on birth control, Mm -hmm. you know, I think it's worth trying different methods until you find one that fits for you. I agree. Also one last thing. It's, it's crazy to me that like for women, like we're the ones that are supposed to have Mm -hmm. to take birth control. But for us, we only have a certain number of eggs Mm -hmm. for men. They produce sperm all day, day. all day, every day, literally. So I don't know. Like, I feel like that's, I don't know. Maybe it's just like the misogyny of, the oh. world but oh it is oh it is <laughs> definitely is huh? yeah. Uh-huh. yeah yep next <laughs> oh, that's i nice. never like, thought about it like that janelle i think i have the same as you you're but morena I, gal yes hell yeah what's it called morena morena oh but i got it actually because you had such positive feedback on it oh so. dude i swear to god i should work for morena i should be a sales girl <laughs> yes. like, i love the IUD. i will i try and get everyone on it <laughs> yeah i was so, thinking yeah. about doing it but i knew i was gonna have kids relatively soon i didn't want to go through like putting it in for it only a short amount of time to get it in there i will admit yeah, that you would like pass out almost uh the second time you the first up. time it was very painful but i was okay the second time i got it removed and put back in and i was literally <laughs> john was <laughs> in the room sad, not funny. it was no it's kind of funny now but i got really <laughs> lightheaded because it was painful and so i was laying there and then all of a sudden i felt like i was gonna shit myself like i was going to like fi- like i'm not even kidding you i was like oh my god i'm gonna shit myself but then I sat up and was really lightheaded from being in pain. So then I was like, I'm going to pass out. So I was like, I have two options. And I can either run down the hallway in my gown and try to get to the bathroom to poop. But I think I'm going to pass out if I do that. And then just shit unconsciously. And shit unconsciously. I was like, 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 oh my work. God. No, so I was like here. literally panicking. He's like, I don't, what do you want me to do? I was like, I don't know. So I was sitting, I like got up. I was sitting on the cold ground at the doctor's office oh, in my no. little room. And then I was like, I'm going to throw up. So I was like sitting there dry heaving and not, trying not to shit. Anyways, I survived. Didn't shit on the floor. Didn't shit my pants. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it was kind of pa- painful. But honestly, it was worth it. Like, short amount of pain for a long amount of yeah, protection. Protection. Been yeah. good. There you go. All right. Hot take. This isn't a question, but they say, shower sex is overrated. Am I supposed to look, or how am I supposed to look sexy while balancing on my tippy toes <laughs> and concentrating on not slipping and busting my head open? What are our I... thoughts, ladies? We agree to we disagree. I disagree. I disagree highly. I, Shower sex is one of my faves. Me too. I know a lot of people aren't into it. I fucking love it. Me too. It's wet. It's warm. <laughs> yeah, it's cozy. It's cozy. Yep, it's clean. It's clean. It's clean. Less clean up. <laughs> Easy clean up. <laughs> That's right. I love it. I, what about you guys? Um, I personally think it's just a lot more work oh. than I, with the water on my face. And I'm like, can't, <laughs> you know, it's like, there's been a few times where it's like on my nose. and Oh, no. So I mean the t- the good times have been good, but it just hasn't been, been yeah. Difficult. Oh, but I did have a friend. She had a black eye one day, and <gasps> everyone was like, "What happened?" Oh, she literally no. slipped and hit her face <gasps> while there she was having sex in the shower. <laughs> oh my, oh my god. gosh, we love that a lot. And like oh. smacked her eye on the t- oh. like on the tub. Oh, oh my god, no. yeah, it's, that would hurt so. It so looks scary. Be careful. It's a little dangerous. I'm sure yeah. some That's the way to ruin the mood. out there. What do you think, Curly? <laughs> um. I think it's not overrated. No, you it's agree. Fun. No, okay. it's, it's 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 fun from time to time. I would yeah. say you're right. Like easy cleanup. Yep, that's the best part of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I like, like it. it. And so I get cold really easily. <laughs> so same. if I'm in my room, I'm like, eh, it's cold. The only the <laughs> issue that we have is Josh likes cold water. Of like he, he, does. he doesn't Polar like it to be too warm, and so I end up having to just 
deal with like lukewarm, lukewarm. and i'm like oh this could be so much better <laughs> i like it when it's here. like scorching hot yeah i do John's too like, oh, i like my skin I can't to turn breathe. red <laughs> that's me i don't like hot water I love hot water yeah, i no, do no, no, no. okay it's two hours before a last minute d appointment what would you do to get ready janelle what's your thoughts personally i would wash the areas and i would either mm-hmm. take a shower or mm-hmm. do a little you know, a uh, sponge bath, if you will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I personally uh, love a smooth leg and I, I get too. waxed. So um, I don't shave my cooch, but <laughs> if I did, I would do that. Um, yeah, I'm just anti hair for me personally. Honestly, I don't two care about anyone else, hours but... before a D appointment, though, is a little soon to be doing the shaving because sometimes it's irritated. Like that's it can true. Be a little razor bumps. Yeah, I, I say you got to go at least six hours before. Mm. If you're going to shave. I if not, you just let it out. Let it be. Oh, yeah. Let it be where, where it... Exactly. Yeah. No. I Natural. Agree. I would say, if anything, just clean the cooch. Yeah. I always clean the cooch. Always I will clean say. the cooch. And that's not to, CTC. Like, really do anything for anyone. It's, like, mental no, for me. No, it's my I own thing. Like, I, I, I just like yeah. how it <laughs> makes me feel. Yep. I, I normally like, like Josh to shower, too. Not going to lie. Honestly, I normally, I sweaty prefer ball sack is so... Ew. Oh, my vibe. <laughs> right? Oh, his vibe is not mine. Absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. And there's nothing I understand. Bodies are bodies, you know. But there's nothing wrong with a little clean. Oh, here's a fun one: fuck, marry, or kill, or <laughs> and kill. I guess it's all right, three. Right. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Bill Clinton. Oh my god, this <laughs> That's is horrific. Terrible, you guys. Bill who Clinton. did this? <laughs> that was horrific. Who put us in this predicament? Okay, uh, I literally think that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would fuck Elon Musk. I would Same. marry Jeff Bezos and I would kill Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Agree. Even though I, I literally only marry Jeff because he's rich yeah. as fuck and I like I would probably just like take his money yep. and not like never deal with then him. Then divorce his ass. I'd after. fuck Elon because even though I'm not a f- big fan of you know He's hotter him, than Bill and Jeff. I was saying he's hotter than Bill and Jeff. <laughs> and no offense to Bill, but Bill's kill Bill. Kill yep. Bill. Can't always kill Bill. <laughs> that's what, it, that's what the I answer. Is. What about you guys? I'm same. I would choose the same ones. Mm-hmm. Same ones? Yeah, same logic. Yep, All right. Yep, yep, yep. All right. There's only one way to go with this yeah, one. Yep. <laughs> Let us know what you would do, folks. So, of course, February is known as the month of love. It's Valentine's Day in this month, and, you know, everyone's trying to celebrate love. But what about self-love, and especially self-love year-round? Well, that is why I love Third Love so much, because I feel like they make me feel confident, and they really boost my self-love every single day that I wear them. Recently, I got a package in the mail from Third Love, and one of the things that I got was a really, really cute lounge slash, like, pajama set. I loved how soft it was, and it also had lace on it, but it wasn't scratchy lace. I feel like a lot of times when things have lace, it gets really itchy. But this was super, super soft, very stretchy, really comfortable. And I especially loved the color. It was a beautiful, like, burgundy red color. Third Love does comfort so you can do you. Their bras, underwear, activewear, and feel-good all-day wear are designed to hug better, hold stronger, and support longer. And I feel like the really cool thing about Third Love is their fitting room quiz. It makes it so easy to find a bra that actually fits with their quiz. And it's honestly like a personal shopper, but better. It focuses on size, breast shape, current fit issues, and your personal style to find bras and underwear that are perfect for you. Another thing that's great is that you can love your fit guaranteed, and if not, exchanges and returns are free for 60 days. And Third Love is the largest donor of undergarments in the U.S. Partnering with organizations across the United States, Third Love has donated over $40 million worth of bras to help people in need. Feeling is believing, so upgrade to everyday pieces that love your body as much as you do. And right now, you can get 20% off your first order at thirdlove.com slash sesh. That's 20% off at thirdlove.com slash sesh. Seshies, you know that time is money. No one likes, you know, having to get in your car, go somewhere, and then wait in line. It's just not a good time. But with stamps.com, you can skip the trip and focus on how to take your small business to the next level. With Stamps.com, you can skip the trip and focus on how to take your small business to the next level. Stamps.com lets you print official postage right from your computer and saves you money in the process so you can spend less time at the post office and more time making your customers happy. We use Stamps.com and it is huge for our business. I cannot recommend it enough. It saves us so much time and money. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. And Stamps.com gives you all the access to the post office and UPS shipping services that you need right from your computer. You don't even have to leave the comfort of your home or office space. 
And you get discounts that you can't find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 75% off UPS rates. Whether you're an office that's sending out invoices or a side hustle Etsy shop or a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com can make your life easier. All you need is a computer and a standard printer. You don't need any fancy special supplies or equipment. It's super, super easy. You're going to be up and running in minutes and printing official postage for any letter package and sending it anywhere you want to send it. So sign up today with promo code SESH for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. There's no long-term commitments or contracts. All you got to do is go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage, and enter in SESH. Thanks so much to stamps.com for sponsoring our show. How does one go about introducing the idea of using sex toys with their partner? Any thoughts? Um, I feel like for some reason there's a huge taboo around this or it's like embarrassing or you don't want to make your partner feel like they're competing with your toy. Yes. They're not competing. They're no. on the same team. They're teammates. They're there That's for the right. same goal. You Friends, know? not enemies. Friends, not enemies. It's like a little same. Pa- like superpower that mm-hmm. your partner can use to enhance the whole experience. A little really. boost. So what they're boost. asking though is how, how do they go about introducing it? I think that you just whip it out. That's what I'm going to say. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, you just, once it's all hot and heavy, you get, get it out. Get it out. Or, I could mean. Could go badly, though. I don't know. You could you could tell them, like, hi, I bought this. Or, yeah, you could, um, <laughs> like, if I mean, there's a lot of ways to go about it. If you, if you want to have an honest, honest conversation and it's something you feel like they're, they'll be, like, offended by it or something, then I would have. The I would say like, hey, I really want to start using toys. Mm-hmm. I think that it would be really fun. Um, Maybe you know, start with a toy for them first. Yeah, that's a great. Or to- the toy for they can both see of you. How good it is. There's lots of toys for that's two true. plus people. Um, also, maybe something that isn't you know something a little bit depending on what you're using it for, but something a little bit smaller and not so intense at first. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe not bring out the fucking 16 incher maybe bring out <laughs> something a little bit smaller <laughs> yeah yeah definitely a little like start small yeah yeah that's my advice too but I yeah agree. i think it's it'd be good or you can go like shopping online together yeah and it might be a little bit like awkward but it's almost i feel like you if anything you could look at it as like it's like flirting again you know like ooh, like butterflies in my stomach like mm-hmm. i'm a little nervous because yeah. whatever mm-hmm. but yeah I mean, if your partner is supportive, they should want you to have a good experience and vice versa. So I think you got to weigh out your your partner here. Like, yeah. are they the type who's going to be best if you just whip it out and get it going and you just hand it them and say this, mm-hmm. this is happening right yeah. now. Some of them, I think, would respond better to that. But some of them, you might need to have a little chat beforehand and make sure they're comfy with it. Warm you know, and either way is OK. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe you like play with it before. Just kind of like check it out. Yeah. See the buttons. Yep. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. Do you think energy transfer between sex is real? Absolutely. I do. And if so, how much energy do you think you gain from that person and vice versa? That's interesting. I get energy. My partner does not. My partner goes to sleep. <laughs> oh, so you get energy in the sense of like, ener- like hi- not hyper, but like the opposite of sleepy. Versus yeah, exactly. Like, I, I like, thought well, the more energy after. transfer is like spiritual. Like that's are you I was absorbing their energy? I think that's what they meant. And that's that's what I meant too. And I, I do think hmm. that maybe you can. Like I think um it's I I find sex to be a spiritual thing for me for sure. Um, but I also do get energy in the sense of really? I get energized. You don't? Uh, we always talk about that, how men and women are so different. I that- get really hungry. <laughs> I get hungry too. Oh, I get, like, now it's good for a big meal. I want to do things. If I yeah. have a big meal and then try and do the deed, that's not as good for me because I'm fucking no. tired after my big oh, yeah. meal. Josh and I always plan around. Eating. I like doing the deed first and then I'm like, hell yeah, now I can eat. That's I burned right. off a bunch of calories. Now I have an appetite. Yep. I get like that too. <laughs> Josh gets exhausted. He passes out almost always like right after. After? Yep. Oh. It's like he, it's a release, you know, that's yeah. what they oh, do yeah. say is people like get like tired because they like, so much pent up energy and yeah. then it's mm-hmm. like released so quickly. But I get energy if it goes on during the day. If it's at night mm-hmm. and I'm laying in bed and it's nighttime for bed, like going to yeah. sleep, then I can go to sleep. But oh, I can't. I, I will literally be up for at least two hours after. That's why we normally don't do it that late at night because I'll be up till two in the morning. And I get kind of pissed that he's like ditches me. <laughs> I have heard that 
uh, having an orgasm makes you helps with insomnia. Like if you can't go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Oh, hmm. so it's the opposite I've heard for that you. Too. Interesting. Not for me. No? Not for me at all. Mm-mm. Side note: I heard some women bring uh, vibrators to labor and delivery to get shit going down there. Oh, that's smart. Mm. Oh, it helps with period cramps. It, having it an orgasm. Mm-hmm. Like that's a known thing. I've seen people put it like in their hospital bags. Honestly, that's really smart. It helps. Yeah. Things get yeah. I mean, it makes total fucking sense. Imagine if the nurse walks in. She's gonna. Did, did they leave or is it a medical thing? <laughs> they're like, oh, carry like, on. I will monitor. be checking the monitors. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe they're like, oh shit, sorry. Oh, sorry I don't girl. know. <laughs> How do you react? <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Okay, you know let's what, see. What's really funny that I heard a long time ago is that um, orgasming also clears your congested nose. Huh. What? That's interesting. Well, you were congested a few weeks yep, ago. Yep, and it works. Test it. <laughs> <laughs> what? She tested it. Like, it brain. works. The theory is accurate. That is so interesting. No, okay. But, like, and why? Just try it one day. Next time I have a cold. <laughs> you sound like you have one right now. I know what you're doing when you get home. <laughs> I'll report back next week if it worked. I am a virgin and scared. Does it hurt a lot? And when does it get better? Uh, Okay. I feel like everyone who hasn't had sex thinks that the first time they have sex has to be like this magical, mm-hmm. amazing moment because that's yep. what the movie show or whatever. That's literally not the case for anyone I know. <laughs> no. Literally every person I've talked to, the first time they've had sex is like awkward and usually a little uncomfortable. And it's basically just like <laughs> getting it over with the first mm-hmm. time before you can like, because it takes practice. Yeah, You're not going to be good at it if you've never done it. No, it was very awkward. It was My first so time was awkward. very awkward. Oh, yeah. It didn't hurt for me personally. It but. wasn't, but it wasn't like, didn't feel great. I was kind of like, okay, oh, that's really? what that mm. is. Okay. I was like, hmm. A little disappointed. That's almost. all the buildup for that? I was like, really? I'm, I'm on the same page with you, with you Janelle. Mm. It's, I feel like there's so much buildup to it. And you have to practice makes perfect. You got to get better. You got to find out what you like, what you don't like, what your positions you prefer, you know, all that type of stuff. And so... I feel like it does get better. You know, would you agree? Yeah, oh, yeah. It gets way better. Yeah, my like, first time was on an oriental rug. It was fucking pokey. My <laughs> first time was in a fucking car in the trunk. Nice. In the <laughs> middle of winter with Lovely. the heat not even on. Oh, my God. Your little ass must have been so cold. I was cold as shit. And I was like, what in the fuck? And the trunk sucks. The car uh, sucks in general. Wait, was it like an SUV or was it like a... It was an SUV. <laughs> okay. No, I wasn't in like the fucking trunk of a sedan. <laughs> <laughs> she was doing some God. contortion in there. <laughs> you know, you locked yourselves in. Um, but yeah, it does get better. And honestly, I feel like if you can kind of lose the stigma that it needs to be perfect and like it is what it is, it will be what it will be. As long as you, the most important thing is that you want to do it, you know? Yeah. As long as you for sure are the one that's wanting to have the sex, then, mm-hmm. you know? I would say just kind of like get it over with but it's and have it in that sense. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it is so different for everyone. There's tons of people out there who painful sex is an actual problem oh, that yeah. doesn't get any better. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. doctors have to get involved. Some people have to get, uh, what are they called? Different like standards, positions but... help with uh, like painful sex as well. Like some, what mm-hmm. works for someone might be really painful for another person. Um, so yeah, I would like talk to your doctor also like, like go on, google and like there's so many forums of people who you know deal with issues with sex and romance and yeah how figured out what works for them yeah i wish we could give more advice in that category it's never been painful for me personally but i know women who it has been i would say personally if you're worried about it being painful if you are able to be on top because you have more control of how far Mm -hmm. things go oh yeah um versus someone who's like (laughs) in control could be a little rough Mm. uh so yeah finding ways that you control all right next up dealing with depression has been a constant in my life and really impacts my sex life as well have either of you ladies had trouble with sex drive how do you get it back to normal do depression kills your sex drive Mm -hmm. also birth control which is fucking helpful Mm -hmm. it's like (laughs) i'm literally taking this like don't get pregnant and now i'm like yeah I feel like so many people go through this. There, it's almost like something that everyone goes through at some totally. point, you know, and if you haven't yet, you probably will is the unfortunate reality, mm-hmm. whether it's from depression or some other health issues or mm-hmm. anxiety. I mean, could be a, a variety of things yeah. that 
makes that has an impact on your sex life. Mm -hmm. And I definitely went through this, not as much. Well, you know what? It probably was depression too. But when I was really in the thick of my chronic illness and like barely getting out of bed, I mean, I was like so tired. I was going to sleep so much earlier than Josh every night that we were almost like never on the same schedule. And I just wasn't in the mood. And I think a lot of it was depression. Totally. I just felt really bad about myself at the time. And yeah, I went, there was like a solid year there. And I started getting worried about things like, is he okay with this? And like the right person will be. And it was never an issue. Like Mm -hmm. he's always been patient, but yeah, that's, it's really hard. I don't know if there's an answer for it because you can't just get it back to normal. There's no like solution off that we can offer you other than seek therapy, take care of your mental health. And if it's from chronic illness, sometimes that's nothing you can control. Yeah. It might be something you have to live with forever. Right. Um, and it can be really difficult. I really wish I had more advice on this topic other than, you know, try to stay hopeful because oftentimes it will pass. Yeah. But I know it doesn't always pass. And I think that it also is hard because a lot of like SSRIs and stuff are known to decrease your sex drive. So then you're playing with the, you're kind of toying with, okay, well, I'm on an antidepressant because I'm fucking depressed and I'm trying to help myself. Yeah. But now it's killing my sex drive. So do I get off of it? But then what if I, you know, go back into this dark hole? So it's to- yep. it's really hard. And yeah, like Kendall said, I wish there was like a specific tool or like supplement that you could take yeah. that makes you horny all the time or whatever. Yeah. But Or a way to fix that. I mean, depression's a bitch and it's so different for yeah. everyone. It can be really, really hard. And there is no like one solution Mm-mm. for that question, unfortunately. Just be patient with yourself, gentle with yourself and know that it's not your fault and that it's Mm -hmm. completely normal. Mm -hmm. I feel embarrassed of my body when having sex because my boobs are very small advice. Well, girl, I am the fucking president of the IBTC itty bitty titty. Ah, IBTC. (laughs) You're the president, but you don't even know how to fucking say it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) IBTC. Um, No, but really, I feel like This, even if you don't have small boobs, I feel like this is just the general conversation of having fucking insecurities about your body Mm -hmm. and how do you get past that? Totally. Um, I think that first and foremost, your partner, if they're wanting to have sex with Mm -hmm. you, they ought, they find you attractive. Yes. And I think it's important to remind yourself that like, if they are initiating it or they Mm -hmm. are, you know, agreeing that they want to have it with you or whatever, there's obviously something there that they're attracted yeah. to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that doesn't necessarily make, you know, you f- feel a se- different way about your body, but I feel like it's important to try and remind yourself that like, you know, they want to be here. They mm-hmm. want to have sex with you. And I think it's also important to remind yourself that having those insecurities is totally normal. Pretty much yeah. everyone has them. Um, before I got my breast reduction, I was really self-conscious about my boobs. I thought they were too like floppy and big and like in the way. Mm-hmm. And I would get really, I used to, I remember I used to say it, it's like National Geographic and I'd mm. get like all upset about it. Which is but, like funny, but also it's like, I know. sad. I mean, I used to make a joke out of it, but yeah, it came, came out from of sadness somewhere. Yeah. and insecurity. Um, but yeah, I think that's the the best thing you can remember is like this person it wants to be there for a reason. And mm-hmm. if they didn't, they would leave. Right. So exactly. I mean, we're the harshest critics on ourselves. The thing yes. that's the thing is your partner likely isn't thinking about no, you know, certain things like that. They're probably thinking about what is going on. Exactly. In the and moment. Also, I feel like there's certain things that maybe you can like specific lingerie that accentuates parts of your body that you actually really like. Or, you know, if you know that there's parts of your body that you love, like looking at yourself in the mirror before and being like, hell yeah, my ass is mm-hmm. awesome. Or like, mm-hmm. I have beautiful legs or whatever, like, you know, whatever it may be. Or find some lingerie that you feel really comfortable right. in. Right. Find something that makes, that makes you feel really sexy in. Um, and then also, like, if, if it's someone new that you're not really comfortable with, I think there's something to be said about the atmosphere. Like, if you are having sex with a ton of fucking fluorescent lighting on like, if you're gonna have sex right here, you may not feel the most comfortable because everything's floor, showing. It might yeah. be a little much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're in, oh god. Okay. Um, but you know what I mean. Like, so it depends on the lighting. Maybe like try and set the ambiance, so like to be moody and more sexy, whatever that means to you, to just try and like appeal to yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? Good lighting, good candles. Yeah, rose petals. Set the scene. I don't know. Kick your dogs out of the room. Something. Good lighting for sure. I always like to set some candles and stuff. Yeah. Thoughts on pegging your partner? Would you ever try it? I don't know what that is. I think in the butt. 
Yeah, it's like oh. when I think it's like when a girl puts a strap on and oh wow, yes. um, uses, you know, it's like I don't. Think let that. me tell you. <laughs> uh, I would. I don't. I mean, no shame to anyone. Whatever, do what you do. But uh, I don't think. I mean, I can't say maybe. Ne- maybe never. Never say never. Maybe I don't never. Know. Never. It's not my interest right now. Not my interest right now. That's a good way to not put it. Not my interest yeah. right mm-hmm. now. But um, I I don't really have any thoughts on it. I could give a shit what other people huh. are doing. It could be kind of interesting. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, not for me. It does, <laughs> you, don't yeah. be, you don't have to convince yourself that it's for you. <laughs> I could say no on that. Oh, not for okay. Me. I'm self-conscious about how I smelled on there. Any advice or is that normal? I've heard lots of people say it's completely normal, but I feel like that verifies on the, per- or that varies on the person. Okay. Girls and guys, smelling the your bodies have a scent. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking whole yeah. machine down there, especially for folks with a vagina. It's yeah. there's and a lot going on the down outside there. Outside with soap is only going to make so much of a difference. Like right. you can't just like make it smell like cookies. And I it mean, shouldn't. it's going to smell like a vagina, a genital, no matter what. That's it. But <laughs> like I, I feel like you know, there's something to be. If it's like really. Yeast, if it's potent yeast, yeah. and it's really like they're Make obviously sh- you can yeah. have an infection or something. Yeah, get checked out. But Make as far sure. as like, but if your gyno says, hey, that's just a normal smell. Right. I mean, that's it. And you d- you definitely don't want to be douching or no. putting soap up there. It's no, 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 really no. not good for our bodies. It cleans itself. It does. Don't. I mean, cleaning the outside is one thing, but yeah, yeah, inserting other things. Um, yeah. yeah, it's normal. I mean, as long as you like we said, go to the doctor. Make sure it's normal. Right. But. Everyone's yeah. no one smells like water. Perfect or yeah. water. Yeah. yeah. I remember like oh, I saw somewhere that some guy was like, Yeah, if I a remember. pussy doesn't smell like water, get out. I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you talking <laughs> about? Out. If you're with someone who is like that, fuck that. Like yeah, seriously, you should be like a virgin. Sounds like some someone who has no idea. Stupid. Like never seen a vagina. It doesn't smell like water. Mm-mm. And obviously, if they're down <laughs> to be near it, then they probably are cool with how it smells. Mm. You know? Advice on dirty talk while doing the deed. My boyfriend loves it, but I can't get myself to do it because I feel so awkward. What do you even say? Well, I don't know <laughs> if I can tell you what to say. <laughs> you just gotta fucking go say do it. it. Yep. Like, and I, it feels awkward. And it feels awkward at but first. But it also feels great. But then like once you get a, a past the initial awkwardness, mm-hmm. like it's great. Plus, if your boyfriend's into it, like if yeah. you even say like the slightest thing, he'll fucking probably... <laughs> we all know what you're about to say. You know what I mean, girl? <laughs> but that's right. That's, he's going to be like, oh my God. Yep. Can so, you give us an example? Um, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you guys think about that? Yeah. Do you like the dirty talk? Yeah, you're right. Like, it is awkward at first, but like, once you get it going, and once you guys are both comfortable with it, like, yeah. it fun. does come natural and mm-hmm. it is fun. Like, it doesn't, I yeah. mean, some wild shit can come yeah. to your mind when it's, you're yeah, in it's the moment. True. Like, Oh, yeah. Ooh. Came out of my mouth? <laughs> I mean, I feel like if, it, you know, it's the right time and you're feeling it, great. Usually, this, it happens when I've been drinking. Same. I get and wilder when I'm drinking. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't need Jared talking to me like, you know, like, like not rambling. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, Shut up. Like, <laughs> like, Shut like up. a fucking novel. <laughs> that would be hilarious, though. Oh, like, it's amazing. a joke. Uh, one thing I feel like you could do is, if you're comfortable with it, uh, watching the P word. I'm not going to say it because YouTube will freak out, but watching adult entertainment or um, like reading something that has something like that because it may like give you ideas on like what to say. I don't know. But honestly, practice. I don't know. Practice. Starting small and ending big. big. Yeah. <laughs> ending big. What would you do if you are in a long-term relationship with someone, but the sex is just bad? No passion, no fun, no attraction there. I've tried everything, but... There's just nothing good there. LOL. I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> oh, she's you're LOLing LOL. about it. <laughs> I'm really hard. sorry that I'm you're in that sorry. position. That's yeah. got to be really tough. And sometimes there's just nothing you can do. Like that might be your partner's vibe. Is, I mean, to him, it might be great. You don't yeah, know. that's a great point. Can you com- Do you communicate that it's not great? Or are you faking that it's great? Because I think one of the worst things that women do, which... I'm not saying this this could be a man talking about a woman. We don't know. True. Honestly, yeah. yeah, Sorry. But I I think just in general, like faking an orgasm is literally only hurting yourself. Yep. Because it makes the other person think that they're Mm -hmm. doing it right when in reality they could be doing it totally wrong. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a hard situation. It really comes down to do you think 
this person is worth it. Like if you want this to be a long, you're, well, you're already in a long-term relationship. If you see a future with them, yeah. you got to weigh the options here. Like, can you satisfy yourself in other ways maybe mm -hmm. to, to, because he's so great in every other way that it's worth it. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe it's just not something that you can are willing to, to deal with to because deal with yeah, him. there is no way to force someone to, you mm -hmm. know, you can try certain things you can try. Well, she says she's tried everything. Or they have tried everything. I don't know who's writing this, but it's a hard situation. I think you really got to decide. I agree. You know, is this worth it? And also the pros and cons. I think that there's something to be said about going to therapy just to discuss like, mm -hmm. what if there's other reasons that you guys don't that know about true. that's making the sex not good? That is a um, good point. That maybe you don't even know is the issue or has a connection to the fact that you're not having good sex. So mm. yeah, something to think about. So this isn't much about sex, but I've been in a straight relationship for five years and I always thought I was bisexual, but lately I'm feeling like I might actually be gay despite never having slept with a woman. Okay. I'm engaged. We recently bought a house and we're planning a wedding. E. We haven't had sex in over five months. Oh my gosh. So I guess my question is, do you have any tips on bringing the spark back into our relationship or how should I tell him I might be gay? I mean, I've got to be honest here. I think... If you're having those feelings, you owe it to yourself to explore that. And maybe I would not get married. Yeah. I mean, I know you bought a house. I mean, that, that's a that's hard really situation. Tough. I'm sure you still care about this person, but you can't just ignore that part of yourself. You have to, I think, explore that. If you're you, worth it to yourself, yeah. like you said. You owe yeah. it to yourself to at least explore mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And if I, you have that feeling, there's a good, I mean, you know yourself there's a good chance that's a legitimate feeling. And I think you should explore that. And, you know, maybe if this this person is open and cares about you, well, whether they, I mean, they care no matter what, right? right. But there's a possibility you could tell them and they might say, go explore this. And if, if you feel that's not the right path, then come back to me and I'll be here. Mm. Maybe they mm -hmm. are willing to be open to that. They might not. They might be very hurt by that yeah. and want to move on from you. And I think... You got to do what's best for yourself, but also respect that that person's going to do its best for in them. return. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But I think that just holding on for the sake of holding on is is not fair to you. And it's not fair to your partner either. I no. mean, especially you don't want to you don't want to get legality into the relationship if force is a pain in the ass and you don't want to be figuring this out way later and then having to go back and mm -hmm. do that. Like if you're if you're before the wedding and you're having those types of thoughts and you haven't had sex in five months and you think that's because of that situation, right. I would I would pull back and maybe take some time to what's soul not soul search, but like take time for yourself and right. go explore these other feelings. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Is it okay to sleep with a guy who is a known player if you prepare yourself to not get attached and you get tested after? Absolutely. Sure. Why not? What the fuck? <laughs> sleep with whoever you want. Yeah. If you're if you don't want to if you're worried about your feelings, then probably no. Yeah. But if you're not going to get attached and you get tested after, there ain't no shame in that. No. Do the dirty deed. Do you keep the lights on or off? Uh, I prefer them off, but I prefer the lights off pretty much all the time. Like a nice <laughs> yeah, little side, like a little lamp or something. Same. I hate overhead lights. I like dim lighting. Um, but yeah, lights off for me. Yeah. I'll do lights on, but I yeah. prefer lights off. Like, what do you whatever. guys, what do you think? Lights on, lights off? Um, I like lights off. I say lights off. Same. Good good lighting. Yep. Ooh, this one's spicy. Okay. Hey, guys. My boyfriend has trouble getting hard and staying hard when we are trying to have sex. And on multiple occasions has even gone soft while in the middle of doing the deed. That's a hard situation. Not. I'm sorry. He insists there is always a reason for it, like he is tired or his stomach hurts. But maybe, but I'm starting to really get concerned and frustrated. Any advice? Thank you all so much. That that's like I said, that's a tough situation. I feel like there could be multiple reasons why this is happening. Mm -hmm. It could be a medical reason, which yep. if so, I've I think been with a guy like that. Then it's like Common. you it deserve to go get that checked out there are people that can help you with that mm -hmm. that's what i'm trying to say if it's not a medical condition then it could be a whole plethora of things a and plethora. plethora like i'll just come out and say it if he's going if he's not able to keep it up because 
he's not enjoying it or finding the whole thing, you know, to turn him on or finding you attractive. Like that's a problem, right? Yeah. No, ma I mean, no matter what it is, it's a problem it's, it's because a prob it's, you can't, you can't do the deed if you right. can't. Unfortunately, yeah. the guy's got to be ready in that right. aspect. Um, yeah, it could be something medical. In mm -hmm. that case, he probably needs to see a doctor. Maybe that's something you start there mm -hmm. and rule that out. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, therapy is the always good. Hurt. Yeah. I think people are surprised at how underlying issues that are, or, or trauma that yeah. you've been through that has nothing to do with your partner. This mm -hmm. is something that you've dealt with on your own in the past and bringing that into the yep. relationship subconsciously. You may not even know mm -hmm. that you're doing that. Yeah, that's a good um, point. And that could be something that your boyfriend's going through. Um, but honestly, I would start with an honest conversation of like, yeah. And it sounds like you kind of are, well, you said you're frustrated. I don't know if you've expressed that frustration and concern to towards your boyfriend. If you haven't, I would definitely do that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and not in an attacking way but as a more like you know care i care i'm concerned mm -hmm. i am curious mm -hmm. you know why this is happening on. and not do it when you're trying to have sex i think it's like if or you're in the heat of the moment yeah. or like it doesn't work mm -hmm. and you're like what the fuck what's going on why yeah, you aren't you feel blah, blah, frustrated blah. And right then, yeah you don't want to bring it up then i would bring it up at a different point in time mm-hmm so, yeah, I'm sorry I mean, about that. And it's possible he does have some stomach stuff going on, yeah. too. If you get a stomach ache during or any type of, like, headache or pain, yeah, like, it can no, for kill sure. that vibe. Oh, totally, yeah. So. But I think if it's, like, constant. I think it's about identifying the problem. Right. And then you can kind of work from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Last one. What should I do if my partner gets upset with me when I don't feel like having sex? We have sex every day. And if one day I don't feel like it, he thinks I don't love him or not attracted to him. Ooh. Um, it sounds that's like... That's hard. I keep saying that's hard. And then... <laughs> it's not the right word for that's this hard. conversation. That's <laughs> hard. Uh, I do feel like there could be some sort of um, insecurity on your partner's part, mm. on their part. Clearly. Because or I mean, you can have an addiction too. Oh yeah, you can. Where have a you sex lash out at people mm -hmm. and feel angry about it. Yep. I don't. I think that's total bullshit. Just to be frank about it, I oh, think I that's do too. Messed up. Honestly, they should not be expecting that's you to have it every day. I mean, you're literally. They should be very thankful that you're doing it that I'm much. I'm like, goddamn. Yeah. I ain't that busy. <laughs> I've never gone close to every <laughs> day. Tell you that right now. Nope. Um. And yeah, if you don't feel like it, you don't feel like it. Like, it doesn't matter how mm -hmm. long you've been in the relationship, if you're married, if you're yeah. whatever. If you say no, no means no. And honestly, that's bullshit. He really doesn't think you love him if you don't have sex with him for that, a there's day. There's a deeper that's, issue that's, there that's, in yeah, your relationship. Yeah, that is. That's some serious insecurity. And yeah. I mean, can you imagine? Like, just what, like, I mean, I know both of you guys would be like, uh, I don't care if you are mad but like can you yeah. imagine someone getting like mad at you well i would be hurt if that's someone got mad at i'd be like what saying that like s yeah. I, I would be so upset that's like, manipulative that's, i think and that's hurtful because it's like well i do love you yeah so why is it why do i need to have sex with you every day it's to maybe prove i'm tired that? or i got a stomach ache or i just don't feel like it don't right want now. to you every know? day like, that's that's honestly pretty brutal i'd say i mean i don't know your situation completely i don't know how he reacts in full but i'd say that's like borderline abusive almost to like it's very manipulative it, it's very i mean that's well to I have that expectation things. too i feel like on somebody and for you to know that yeah your partner is wanting that almost it would make me feel anti yeah sex totally because i feel like every day you're like oh hey when yeah. does that happen or like a drag. Like having a, what if you're having a horrible day yeah and you're like fucking sad and crying or you're really pissed off about something mm-hmm you know you have every right to to say no for whatever mm -hmm. reason mm -hmm. and to it have your partner be up. okay with that. Yep. Yeah. So I feel like that's a tough one. Like, what do you do? Because if he gets mad, I don't know. I don't know. I, I say personally, in my opinion, I think you should reevaluate your relationship with mm -hmm. this person. I think that might not be something you want to deal with for the long term. That's pretty annoying. I agree. I mean, obviously, it can be for different reasons. And if he does have some trauma or insecurity going on, yeah. I feel for him. But well, it sounds that's like not it's okay. He needs to work on that. Yeah, like, definitely if not your fault. He believes that you don't love him. Or you're not attracted to him because you don't have sex with him every day. That's his own 
like things he has to figure out. Yeah. Um, I mean, I say therapy if you really want to make it work. You yeah. have someone a third party explain to him why mm -hmm. there's something wrong with that. There's like actual therapists that specialize in sex. Oh yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, sex therapists, sex therapists. So yeah, mm. that is all we have for today. Yep. Uh, let us know if you ever want us to do more of these. Cause yeah, this was fun. I thought it was, yeah. I enjoyed it. I would do another one of these. Bye. See for our 69th episode on Valentine's week. So yep. funny how that laid out. Yeah, it really didn't <laughs> work Very out good. pretty well. Did you have a good Valentine's Day? I did. I hung out with my grandma. Oh, that's that's very sweet. sweet. I brought her roses and chocolates, Aww. and I made her some pesto pasta. And Aww. we watched that movie um, with Le uh, Leonardo. Leonardo. No, not him. <laughs> J Lo and oh, Luke Marry Owen me? Wilson. Sorry, oh, the Marry Me one. Yeah, pretty fucking bad, I'd yeah. say. It's kind of cheesy. <laughs> Is that my second something? time seeing it? Oh. Well, I saw it the first. No, it just came out oh. on streaming services. It's like the most predictable plot ever. Oh, boy. Like, anyway, <laughs> I won't ruin it for anyone else. But the it was visually pleasing. It was like entertaining enough. Yeah. But it gave, it was very Lifetime-esque, like uh. Hallmark movie. So I thought, my grandma's going to love that. She right. loves Hallmark. Even she was like, turn this shit off. Damn. 30 minutes in, she was like, I'm out. Damn. Wow. I know. Wow. That yeah, was nice, though. Wow. We, yeah, we hung out wow. with her. Yeah, wow. wow. And then Josh and I actually celebrated on uh, Sunday night after the Super Bowl was over. Went out for a late din. That's Very nice. nice. That's nice. We've done that a few times to kind of avoid the crowds. Oh, yeah, totally. Day. John and I got um, takeout sushi last night. I was oh. like, I don't want to fucking do anything or go anywhere. That sounds so good. Oh, I wish I could have sushi so bad. He's so cute. He got me, he got me roses and then like eight boxes of mac and cheese because he knows <laughs> how much I love mac I and cheese. I thought you were just eight boxes of chocolate. <laughs> no, I'm not really a bit. I like chocolate, but I'm just not a big box of chocolate gal. Like mm. they kind of like taste weird and like all the weird mm -hmm. fruit flavors or whatever. But yeah, he, he got me a bunch of mac and cheese because he knows how much I love box mac but and was cheese. was it SpongeBob mac and cheese? No, this was <gasps> Annie's, but I do oh, love you do sponge. Like Annie's. I, I will sponge. only eat if it's craft. It has to be shapes. I just got Paw Patrol ones. Dude, I'm excited. Oh, now I want sponge mac and cheese. I haven't had that shit in a while. I don't like the regular noodles. I'll I only do. do the I shapes. love all box mac and cheese. I fucking love box. I love mac Annie's. And cheese. Josh will add um, a little cream cheese and like oh. Parmesan on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, cream mm -hmm. cheese so and mac and cheese good. is so damn so good. good. What did you guys do for Valentine's Day? Um, Adam was working, so he got in pretty late. So I just. I was just doing some crafts by myself. A little self-love time. Yep, that's nice. Watching some Dance Moms. Nice. Oh, yeah. Dude. I saw you've been getting into the Dance Moms oh, world. so much Dance Moms. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Seasons on seasons on seasons of that <laughs> oh, show. I love yes. that show. I have to talk to you about that then because I've watched a lot of Dance Moms. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Dance Moms. Jared and I ordered like the Cheesecake Factory. Mm. So we just got it delivered. And... Oh, we're watching that 1883 show. Oh, I, I don't know that. if you guys. What's that? That Western? Yeah, it's like based off of or like Yellowstone. I don't know if you guys. Oh, I have heard of that. That show is really good. That's so on HBO, we, right? Um, it's on like Paramount. Oh, Paramount. Yeah, okay. it's really good. Did you get cheesecake? I need to know. Yeah. No, I didn't get the cheesecake. What did How you get? Order from the cheesecake factory. Not get the. Did cheesecake? you get the avocado I can't egg rolls? Eat sweets right now. No sweets. I'm. Well, Janelle thinks I have a cavity, and I think I have a cavity. Oh, I don't no. think you told me you think you have a cavity and that it hurts. So I'm well, like, yeah, you should. Yeah, it's too late. You might as well have the sweet. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It hurts when I eat a oh, sweet so. thing. So well, you I know got, the other side. I got mac and cheese bites as oh, my dessert. Oh, the mac and cheese bites yeah. Dude, are that shit fire. is good. With the marinara sauce? Yes. Oh, so good. So good. Dude, <sighs> yum yums. God, they're fucking bread. They're oh, brown bread. Mm -hmm. Just. I know what is it like pumpernickel or something? I don't know. Right, it's mm. so damn good. Wait, pumpernickel. What'd you bread. say about the egg uh, egg rolls? The uh, avocado egg rolls. Oh my god, fucking delicious! Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of the Cheesecake Factory. Thanks. I only get the appetizers there though. Normally, like I like so to, good. I love ordering food with you because you like to share things. I love Josh sharing. is not a sharer, and Ugh. he doesn't like appies. He likes his own entree. No, I, and love I like to get like a sharing. variety of yeah. things. Yeah. I like lots of things. Yeah, not a nice. lot. Of Whenever I'm with Janelle or Sydney, we always get like a couple appies. Yeah, and it's the way to do it. It's so much. I get bored of the we'll same thing really all. quick have you yeah. guys had the uh the cauliflower wings from cheesecake no i oh love oh my guys. god they are fantastic we should do like a mukbang on the sesh should we is that gross 
Is that gross to you guys? Would you guys watch that? Let us know. Um, I wouldn't watch I it. Would, but see, I would. I'm participate. all about the muk mukbang, mukbang, whatever the fuck. I love watching them. Or I don't know, but I love watching them, especially for some reason when people get Cheesecake Factory and do the mukbang. For some reason, it's just really satisfying to me. So oh, we got to get a cheesecake. Yeah, we'll get it at you. Of course. The celebration one. Should we do like a cheesecake taste off? Oh, damn. We should. <laughs> Along with the tomato <laughs> juice taste yeah, off. Yeah. <laughs> Someone Same literally way. commented and was like, I would straight up watch you guys drink tomato juice. <laughs> I really kind of want to do that. I'm craving some tomato juice right now. I'm actually so hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry too. This it's baby about dinner time. Me so we need hungry to leave. these days, you guys. Okay. Oh my gosh. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Um, real quick, if you haven't, please go over to Spotify and Apple Podcasts and oh, yeah. uh, subscribe or follow our show. We greatly appreciate it or leave us a review. Also, you can watch the show now on Spotify, which is really cool. So check that out if you haven't already. And uh, we're also on TikTok. That's right. I made my first TikTok and it's really, really cringe. So you if you can two. find me, I've actually made three, and wow, they have the, catch up. they have the same reaction for all of them because I'm <laughs> fucking so weird. I don't know what to do. Anyways, that's it. We'll see you on the next sesh. But, but until, until then, then keep, keep it fresh. fresh.